far as uh, Josh uh, McNary is concerned, um, I know everybody's aware of the situation, the circumstances. Uh, we placed Josh uh, on the commissioner's exempt list, uh, which will give him time to take care of uh, things that he needs to uh, take care of. Indianapolis Colts coach Chuck Pagano on the defense today. One of his linebackers, Josh McNary, has been arrested and charged with sexual assault, and now he is going to sit out what could be the most important game of his career. Hello, everyone. I'm Dan Kleffler in New York. McNary denying those charges. His team is getting ready to play New England on Sunday for the AFC Championship, the winner going on to the Super Bowl. I want to bring in ABC's Ryan Smith, who's been following the story right from the beginning. And Ryan, this obviously another black eye for the NFL, but it seems as if the league and the team are getting out in front of this. Right, and this is what they can do under the new discipline policy, and this was one of their first true tests. What they have the ability to do is suspend him, or take him off the field, I should say, mm -hmm. without pay. And so he was just brought in to the police station last night, released, and for them to act within 24 hours so shows you that both the team and the league doesn't want to be viewed as, hey, we're making yet another mistake in our handling of domestic violence cases. And so the response to this, and he's been put on the league's commissioner exempt list. Explain what that is then now. So this was a list that years ago was almost never used until the Ray Rice and Adrian Peterson cases. And it's a way for the league to place players on a list, paying them while they're looking into an incident. So the league's position in all of this is, we're not really suspending him yet. We're still paying him. But the player's position is always, well, if I'm not playing, you're suspending me. There's going to be a little bit of a fight over this, as there was with the Adrian Peterson case. He was on the same list. So it's a way for the league and teams to put him on a list where he gets paid but can't play. So Ray Rice has a settlement. I'm going to get the details in just a moment yeah. from what we do know about that. But for this particular case, though, prosecutors are saying that they do have evidence against him. This happened in December, right? It supposedly happened in December. That's right. This happened in the beginning of December. Uh, the woman who's alleging the rape here came forward and talked about a lot of the details. They have information such as the two meeting in a bar, talking. At some point, she makes his way up to his room. They have interactions, even a physical altercation, and then she alleges a rape occurred. She then runs out and takes his phone with her, and that could be a critical piece of evidence. She also tells the story of how she got there and how she left. There are some details she can't remember, but all of these things add up to possible evidence against Josh McNary. So this case is just getting started, and when you see a case like this and it takes weeks to come forward and get to the point of you're arresting or charging somebody, that means there's a lot of back and forth police were sorting through on this one. And now apparently when police arrived at his home yesterday, McNary said the fact that he was ready for them. Yeah, that's a critical fact because it seems that he may have believed that this woman was going to make an accusation, so he started to line things up to say, if the police come my way, I'm going to be ready for them. And when you think about the things he had ready, he lets them in, hey, I knew you were coming. There's a pile of sheets near a washing machine. Now, when police see that, they're thinking, wait a second, is he trying to get rid of evidence? He says to them, I was trying to preserve this evidence for when you came. Here you go, folks. And that's a big deal in many ways, because you may be lining up here is something that says she's got her story, but he's got his narrative as well. So up until this point, really the big case that's been a lot of focus right now from the NFL was the Ray Rice case. Right. And apparently there is a settlement in place. What do we know about this? Well, this is a big one. Ray Rice had tried to sue, at least file a grievance against the Baltimore Ravens, claiming essentially wrongful termination. He claimed that when he was in effect suspended indefinitely from the league, the team also took action against him. And under league rules, only the NFL or the team can take action, not both. Mm. So when that happened, he claimed he was treated unfairly. They, in a sense, cost him really millions of dollars. And so he filed a grievance to try to get that money back. The settlement terms have not been disclosed, but you would have to assume that he's making a pretty penny back. And that's big for him because right now he's not getting a job in the NFL. You know, and we talk about this. We talk about obviously how it affects someone's standing financially. It talks about their relationship. It also talks about the team's ability as well. Not only in Ray Rice, but in this particular case there with Josh McNary then. How is this going to impact the Colts then going into this Sunday? And again, this is not to kind of trivialize the case, yeah. but the fact of the matter is that when you do have a coach that's coming out there and has to handle something like this, clearly you have to wonder how it's going to affect the rest of the team's performance. This press conference, Chuck Pagano just gave right there, I think shows you that it's not going to have a big impact on them. He wanted to go out there and say almost nothing. Say, we've done this, that's it, and then give a whole bunch of no comments. It's straight out of the Bill Belichick 
uh, way of mm. holding press conferences. When something bad happens, answer it quickly and don't say anything else. That's his way of saying, hey, this has nothing to do with our team. It's something that happened. I don't want anybody to be distracted. And make no mistake, this is the final four of the NFL. These guys have waited all their lives to get to this point. So they're probably thinking, you know what? That's a distraction. We wish it didn't happen, but we can't let that be the reason why we lose a game. So I think at this point, while the outside world may look at this and say, oh, my God, it's a huge distraction, I think for the Colts, they're focused on football. Focused on Sunday. All right, ABC's Ryan Smith, the latest on this. Ryan, thank you so much. Sure thing. Appreciate it as always. And, of course, you can keep up to date with this story as it develops in real time by downloading the ABC News app and starring the story for exclusive updates on the go. For now, I'm Dan Kleffler in New York.